Circumference and the Fraction Fair, a math adventure. Written by Cindy Nashwander, illustrated by Wayne Gehan. Fine fabrics, fresh cheese, ba ba. It was the opening morning of the Fraction Fair. Such a merry atmosphere, said Lady Diadameter. She and Circumference strolled jauntily through the crowd with their friend Reginald Parton, the Earl of Fractorn. Fracton. The two men stopped to watch a sword swallower while Lady Di wandered over to a cloth merchant's booth. She ran her hand over a length of fabric. How perfectly soft, she exclaimed. The merchant smiled. You can buy all or part, she said, pointing to the sign above her. What do those numbers mean? Lady Di asked. They're fracton numbers, my lady, the woman answered. They are used to measure equal pieces of something, such as this beautiful cloth. Why is one number below the other? Asked Lady Di. The bottom number is called the denominator, the seller explained. It shows how many parts are in a whole. She drew lines on the material with a soap sliver, dividing the fabric into equal sections. Four in all, asked Lady Di. Yes, my lady, answered the woman. That's what the bottom numbers mean, she said, pointing again to the sign. And if I want just one part of the four, asked Lady Di, the numerator or top number tells you how many parts of the cloth you want. In this case, it would be one, said the lady. Lady Di printed the fraction number one fourth on the first section of the cloth. Indeed, that's one fourth replied the merchant, and two parts of the four would be two-fourths. Three parts of the four are three-fourths, and the entire length is four-fourths, or one whole. Lady Di smiled. I'm partial to red fabric. Have you any? The merchant nodded and bent down. Odd, my red material seems to be missing. I'm so sorry, my lady. She excused herself and hurried away to check with neighboring cloth sellers. At this point, Circumference and the Earl approached, each hungry enough to eat half a horse. Soft curds here, bellowed a portly cheesemonger. Wheels of cheese, parts are whole. I'll take one half of that Wensleydale wheel, said the Earl. I'd like two-fourths of that Cheshire wheel, said Lady Di. She thought of her lesson on numerators. Two pieces meant she could save one for later. I'm so hungry, I'll have this much of the Stilton, said Circumference, pointing to four-eighths on the sign. He thought the bigger numbers meant more cheese, but when the portions were cut, they were the same amount. They're equivalent, explained the cheesemonger. The Stilton is cut into smaller pieces, so there are more of them. Here, I'll cut the cheddar wheel and you'll see. Wait a tick, where is it? Missing cheese? Lady Di remembered the missing red cloth. Was it just a coincidence? Tucked away from the hubbub, six men were divvying up a round of tangy cheddar and looking over a pile of other stolen goods from the fair. Well done, lads, bad old Barnaby said to his brigand band. We've pinched some bright proper stuff we have. Spread out beside them were meat, breads, ale, yarn, fabric, purses, coins, and four fluffy sheep. But that cloth was the easiest pickings I ever did pilfer, chortled one of Barnaby's men. By now, almost everyone at the fair was missing something. People surrounded the Earl, all talking at once. The Earl's head sheep shearer pushed forward. My Lord, he exclaimed, one third of your finest sheep are missing. We had a dozen to clip, but four are gone. Thieves! growled the Earl. They desire easy gain. Let's think like a thief so we can catch the culprit. A plan was quickly hatched. It's a long shot, but it might work. Our puppeteer will set the trap, the Earl said, and Fracton numbers will do nine-tenths of the work. At high noon, the performance began. It featured Fracton's two favorite puppets, the diminutive half-pint and the sizable pottle. Oh, Pottle, a huge golden coin. Let's fly up there and grab it. Such a half-baked idea is no surprise coming from a half-wit like you. The audience roared with laughter. Perhaps a kind member of the audience.
audience could get the coin for us. On the whole, not a half bad idea, unless he or she is partly tempted to keep it. You got that right, Barnaby snickered, poking one of his mates in the ribs. The brigand band had returned to enjoy the performance. I've got a half mad idea. Let's give the coin to the person who finds the largest fraction number. Slips like this one are half hidden all about the fair. Bring your findings here at half past two, or one sixth sense tells us we'll have a winner. The audience sprang into action. A gold sovereign was enough money to buy a small farm. That thief will want that coin, the Earl said to Sir Comfort and Lady Di. We had no stealing before the fair began, so we think the thief is an outsider to Fracton. And you wager that an outsider would think a number like that one sixteenth is bigger than something like one third because the denominator is larger, said Lady Di. I made that mistake myself, admitted Circumference. Now I realize that the larger the denominator, the smaller each part is. The higher the numerator, the more parts there are. People were having fun searching. Fracton numbers were discovered in unusual places. A small girl noticed a seven nights between two slices of bread. This could be the winning number, she said excitedly. Barnaby and his band kept their eyes peeled for Fracton numbers. They observed a woman unwrapping a one half from around a small wax jar, but they dismissed it. Too small, Barnaby told his men. A young boy and his father spotted a 132nd slip. Such a tiny fracton number, moaned the boy. Leave it, son, his father said. No one would be stupid enough to want that. They left it on a lunch table where Barnaby took it. Ho ho, lads, he chuckled. We're in luck now we are. Big numbers, this must be the winning ticket. The tower bells rang at half past two. Would everyone with the slip step forward, the Earl asked the crowd, and please line up by number size. I'm here in the middle, said the woman with one half. Mine's a bit larger than one half, said a boy with five eighths. This one is larger still, I think, said the little girl with seven ninths. The slip holders jostled about, but finally everyone was in order, with Barnaby proudly standing on the end with one thirty second and sweet little Madeline Elizabeth Hallpark on the other with one out of one. The gentleman with one thirty seconds, called the puppet master, as the holder of the smallest fraction number, you may award the golden coin to the winner who holds the one whole slip. No, screeched Barnaby. My number is biggest. The coin's mine. He ran toward the gold sovereign. The Earl blocked him. Defeated, Barnaby and his brigand band turned and fled. They were too fast, the Earl said, returning to the puppet theater. After a fruitless chase, but we found the stolen goods. Those half dozen ruffians were a whole heap of trouble, said Circumference. But they fell to pieces in the end, explained the Earl happily. The village of Fracton and its Earl continued to be famous for sheep the fair, and the unique way they wrote their numbers. Those numbers became known as fractions in Angleland. People used them when they wanted to represent parts of things. Today, we call them fractions.